I'm Rana, and uh, this is one of our rare shows that isn't live, but there is a possibility that we will have some people calling in. Um, the show is about the Connecticut Healthy Workplace uh, Initiatives, and my guest is Dr. Kathy Hermes. She's been on before to talk about the problem of workplace bullying and uh, solutions to the problem of workplace bullying. So welcome, Kathy. Thank you for having me again. It's really nice to be here. Well, thanks for coming down to New London and you know facing all this snow and the you know cold and everything. <laughs> yeah, it was quite the drive, but I noticed it was 40 degrees coming down. So I think your your snow may melt faster than the snow in New Britain. <laughs> Probably. We had a lot, and it's been really cold till today. But today, um, but you know uh, today it does seem like the roads are clearer. So um, I guess. Uh, I'll start out by asking you how you got involved in this whole issue of workplace bullying. Yeah, I'll tell you, it was a surprise to me. <laughs> I'm, a, I'm a history professor at CCSU, and so my, my big interests are in the 17th century. But uh, in 2005, so it was 10 years ago, um, I had a friend who was um, working at the Carrizo Plain National Monument, which was a monument created by Bill Clinton, and all of the monuments have monument managers, and it's part of the Department of Interior for the federal government. So my friend was appointed the first monument manager of this, uh, this new monument that is out in California, and she, she loved her job, she loved the monument. It's a, it's a really beautiful place. And it's known for its wildflowers every year in the spring. It just lights up like a painting. So uh, a couple of years after she got the job, she began, when she would call me, she began talking about difficulties that she was having with her boss. And at first it seemed like, you know, the kind of usual problems that you might have when a new boss arrives. You don't really hit it off with the personality. Mm -hmm. And, um, you know, she tried to kind of engage him in things and take him out on the monument and show him wildlife and things like that, but they just did not hit it off. And as time went on, it became a lot more nefarious and kind of sinister. Um, she was barred from meetings that she, as monument manager, was supposed to conduct. And... Um, he started putting his name on memos that she wrote. And then he disciplined her for an email that she sent when she corrected a factual error that he had made. And by discipline, ordinarily what happens in the federal government, if you, if you kind of come up against your supervisor and they don't like what you've done, they write you a letter of reprimand. And in this case, he told her that she was going to get a letter of reprimand, and then he wound up suspending her oh, for, wow. for a week without pay. So she was very blindsided by this. Um, she took her suspension. She appealed it. Um, and as things were going forward, her, her appeal was denied. He started to get physically intimidating towards her. She became extremely depressed and in something that I really was witnessing for the first time, disoriented. Hmm. So I started to wonder what was going on and she was having a lot of trouble sleeping. She could only sleep about three hours a night. Um, she went to see a, a doctor, a physician, who prescribed sleeping medication. Then she went to see a psychiatrist, thinking that she was becoming anxious all the time. And he prescribed some other medication, uh, like an anti-anxiety medication. Well, she began to like kind of ramble whenever she would tell me a story about what was happening in her workplace. And I got very concerned about her. And at one point I even said, you know, are, you aren't suicidal or anything, are you? And, you know, because I, I realized that this was now something beyond the ordinary workplace personality conflict. And not the normal kind of 
stress level that one usually associates right. w even with a so-so workplace. Yeah, I mean, we all have stresses, and we all sometimes don't like our coworkers or something. You no, know, this was getting, it was, it was getting bad, but I couldn't really put my finger on it. And then one day she said to me, this is worse than when I was married to Jerry, um, her ex-husband, she said, uh, who was an alcoholic. She said, this, this is worse. And so, you know, I, I was worried, but I live in Connecticut. She lives in California. Um, and then in May, I got a phone call at work. She had killed herself. Wow. And it was so shocking to me and just so devastating. And as I began to piece things together, I started to find a name for this. Um, and it was called workplace bullying. I had never heard of this before. I didn't, I knew that what was going on seemed to be kind of like domestic violence. Um, I myself was a, a victim of domestic violence. And so, and things that she would tell me, I would kind of recognize it. But domestic violence, you know, it happens at home, not at work. So um, to make a long story short, I wound up contacting the Workplace Bullying Institute. And um, I came across this book, The Bully at Work, in an earlier edition by Dr. Gary Namey and his wife, Ruth Namey, who, who started the Workplace Bullying Institute from scratch. And Ruth herself had been a target of workplace bullying. And what I came to find out is this is known all around the world. And there are laws against it around the world. Nothing in the United States. Um, we are sort of backwards in some ways in terms of watch, keep, I don't know, watching out for the conditions people live in on so many fronts. Yeah, I mean, it, it, was, it was really incredible to me. And I want to just say, here, this is um, a newspaper article from the Los Angeles Times that featured my friend Marlene. And um, it's a long story. The, the LA Times did a, a very long article um, about her and about the issues on the Carrizo, which were environmental issues primarily. But even in this um, Los Angeles Times article, which was very thorough, very in-depth, they didn't talk about workplace bullying. And I think it was because in 2005 it was a pretty new concept in the United States. But when I when I returned from California after kind of settling Marlene's estate, um, I found out that one of our state senators, Edith Prague, and, um, and Senator uh, Thomas Colpietro, had introduced legislation about workplace bullying. I was really surprised to find this out. It was kind of a, wow. a bill that you know, nobody knew um, about very much. And, and then I, as I talked to Dr. Namey, I found out he was behind a legislative campaign called the Healthy Workplace Bill. And, and that was authored by Professor David Yamada at Suffolk University School of Law. So it turned out that people were understanding what workplace bullying was. Psychologists were investigating it. Um, therapists were trying to help people through it, but they often didn't have a lot of support and there was absolutely nothing they could do in terms of the law. So we have some slides here. I guess we can talk about some of uh, you know, what Connecticut Healthy Workplace Advocates do and what, um, uh, what workplace bullying is. So people can uh, find out more at, um, at uh, workplacebullying.org? Yes. Um, the um, workplacebullying.org is the Workplace Bullying Institute site. And they have a lot of information. Anything you want to know about workplace bullying can be found there. Um, but you can contact us, Connecticut Healthy Workplace Advocates, at ConnecticutBullyBusters at gmail.com. And I'll answer that <laughs> email. And, and if yeah. you want a copy of the PowerPoint today or you want any information, I'd be happy to send it. So workplace bullying is repeated health-harming mistreatment of one or more persons, and we refer to them as targets, not victims, um, by one or more perpetrators. 
It's abusive conduct that includes threatening, humiliating, or intimidating actions, work interference or work sabotage, verbal abuse, and it can include everything from the spectrum of microaggressions to mobbing. So a microaggression is if, if somebody starts like throwing hints at you but never comes right out and insults you or abuses you in an obvious way. Microaggressions um, are often targeted at minorities, so racial minorities or sexual minorities. Um, but it might be, you know, but they can come in all forms. And they're, they're small insults that whittle away at your self-esteem. Whereas mobbing is when the whole group is involved in targeting a person or a couple of people um, through group action. So, you know, it can, it can be really small or it can be really big. Well, now, I think one of the points that I've become aware of reading about this is, you know, workplaces, they're really about as hard to get out of as a bad marriage, a bad <laughs> workplace, especially yeah. in the current climate. They can be. I mean, one thing we've seen since the recession of 2008 is people don't want to transfer jobs. People feel lucky to have them. And so, and especially if you are hanging on to medical benefits or something like that, or, or, and you're insuring maybe your children or a spouse on those medical benefits, you don't want to leave your job. It's, it's critical to keep it. So actually, if you have what's in theory a good job, you might be more at risk than if you're just, you know, slinging <laughs> burgers because I guess it's similar to a domestic violence situation that if your family uh, circumstances are, are upscale, it's actually harder to leave. Sometimes, yes. I mean, the more pressures there are, um, economic pressures and social pressures, the harder it is. And I think my friend found that. Um, she, she was in the federal workforce, so she had medical benefits. She had a federal pension. She had friends who were all in the environmental movement and in the federal service. And so leaving meant leaving friends. It meant leaving her home. It, it, was a, it would have been a big thing to give up. Um, of course, your life is a big thing to give up. Right. Too. I one would think bigger, but I guess when you're looking at your options, they seem very limited. Mm -hmm. And I think the older you get, the harder it gets. Um, so it's not surprising that workplace bullying often targets older people as well. Now, on this slide, um, talks about gender issues and... Right, and I, I realize it's probably kind of hard to see for most people, and this is available on uh, the Workplace Bullying website, and I'm happy to send a copy to anybody who wants it. But basically what you see there is, um, in the little diagrams, men most often bully women. Women most often bully women. Um, but men do get bullied, and those little black figures there <laughs> are the men and it does show you that unlike domestic violence, this is not really totally a woman's problem. And, it, and the perpetrators are not only men, the perpetrators can be male and female. And unfortunately, although women are less often the perpetrators, when they are the perpetrators, they bully other women. So it's, it's kind of a sad uh, statement about how management works and how, how our workplaces are structured and, and what really discrimination has done, um, just long-term institutional discrimination. Yeah, wow. Um, and of course, domestic violence, we're finding it, you know, the uh, women aren't always the target no. either, but the majority still is the case. Yes, yes. And it's hard, I think, for men, especially to kind of admit, because they aren't the traditional quote unquote victim, right. it's really hard for them to admit it when they start to feel abused, whether it's at home or in the workplace. Although the terminology target would seem to make it a little bit easier because you can be a target without thinking you're a victim. Yes, and, and I think that's really true. Perpetrators single out their targets, they're taking aim, and it's, it's not something about you if you're the target. It's not something personal. 
Um, now, who gets bullied? So on this, on this slide, you'll see two people. One is my friend Marlene that I've talked about. And the other is named Kevin. And Kevin Morrissey was an editor of a journal, uh, a scholarly journal, a literary journal, out of the University of Virginia. And um, Kevin was a pretty ordinary guy. Um, he, interestingly, didn't have a PhD. So he was um, the managing editor of the journal. Brilliant, uh, likable, and um, Kevin also committed suicide. And um, it was after the leadership had been replaced on the journal, and he got a new, so he was the managing editor, took care of the business side, but there was a literary editor, and um, the literary editor came in and started to marginalize Kevin, who had been there 20 years. So one thing that we see is most of the people who are targets are people with a lot of experience. They're smart. People like them. Um, they're exactly the kind of people you would never think would have a hard time in the workplace. So unlike in a schoolyard where you might be able to pick out the bullied kid, workplace targets aren't really the same. They're not, they're not the ones cowering somewhere. Hmm. They're not, um, they often don't have things apparently different about them. And, and that can be hard for people to grasp. Like, suddenly there you are, you, you haven't really had a problem socializing, and all of it. Yeah, and, and then suddenly you find your life turned upside down. And it can start with a single perpetrator. Yes. And, and it can grow. So you find yourself, nobody wants to have lunch with you. The, the kind of bullying that happens can often be the same. Nobody to eat lunch with. Nobody will, your friends stop calling you, that kind of thing. Now, um, on this slide again, it, it, it talks about employers and what kinds of things stop bullying. Yep. So, what kinds of things stop works? bullying? <laughs> Unfortunately, very little. Um, most employers will take no action. So, about 70% of employers do nothing, um, which means if you want to save yourself, unfortunately, quitting is the way out. Um, some employers will transfer the bully. So what happened in my friend's case after she committed suicide, the bully himself was transferred to Washington, D.C. So he kind of, it wasn't exactly a promotion, but it was a, it was a move that took him out of the area where he had been supervising. And that happens a lot. And that's, well, sort of institutional across a lot of lines. It sounds sort of like what the Catholic Church has done. Yeah. Uh, you know, I mean, you have a problem a, here, let's send you there. Unfortunately, it's a common management tool. And one thing I want to point out, so there might be people who are small business employers or, um, or even large employers listening to the show. Um, the Namies also wrote a book geared at people who are managers. Now, like, I'm a department chair now, so I'm not technically a manager, but I have, um, you know, I'm responsible for getting my history department to work right. well together, and I try to create a healthy workplace, but you need help sometimes because you'll run into problems that you may not have anticipated. And, and I think this book, and there are many other books, out there that can help managers learn how to be better at coping with difficulties. I'm not saying I always, even I don't handle right. it brilliantly all the time. Well, we do have another PowerPoint. I haven't found it, but we'll, we'll get to that. <laughs> um, so um, let's talk a little bit about um, what kind of help is available for, for, for targets. Mm -hmm. Is there anything right now you said that the United States is way behind the rest of the world. Yeah, it's way behind. So one thing is, if you are a target, the very first thing I would recommend, as soon as you kind of realize you're a target, um, or if you have a friend who's a target, get them to a physician. Not, the first step is not the therapist necessarily, it's your physician hmm. to get a baseline on what your health is like. Remember the definition, it's health harming activity. So. It's, 
and what you will start to see is people's blood pressure changing and um, aches and pains because of stress, loss of weight, not being able to sleep. These kinds of things are symptoms of a health decline. Um, but the next step then is probably seeing a therapist and you really have to do a little research and try to find therapists who know something about either workplace violence or domestic violence or, or some kind of interpersonal violence. You don't, want to, you don't necessarily want to go to the first person that is in the phone book. Um, you, want to, you want to ask the therapist, interview the therapist about what they know about interpersonal violence. Well, I know I've heard that with domestic violence, if you're not careful, a therapist can really make things worse. Yes. Um, so I think it's very important that you know what the therapist's credentials are, um, what experience they've had, and if you get a bad feeling, go someplace else. Like, trust your instincts. I think what's sometimes the case, maybe often the case, is that people who are abusers present better in public than people who are under the stress of being victimized or abused. Yeah. And, you know, even therapists can get taken in by it. Sure. I mean, when somebody comes in after being a target, uh, if they haven't been sleeping and they're anxious, and, and especially if they're experiencing things like microaggressions, which tend to be small, there it is, microaggression, mm. right? You can start to think, oh my God, this person just thinks every little thing is abusive, right? Yeah. And if you're listening to it and you're not trained, what can happen is you get exasperated and you just think, well, what a whiner. Yeah. You know, there's nothing, nothing right for this person when really what's going on is much more, um, is much more serious. Well, I have not succeeded in getting the other PowerPoint, but let's okay. talk a little bit about um, the legislative solutions that are being proposed. You, you mentioned that um, in Connecticut and in states all around the United States, uh, well, I, I, I last saw that you were on two years ago, and mm -hmm. I think maybe two years before that or a year before that. So it's been probably at least four years that we've tried to get a bill passed we've in tried Connecticut. To get a bill. Okay. Yep. So um, what do we need to have in a bill to protect people? Well, as I've said, David Yamada at uh, Suffolk University School of Law, um, since the 1990s has been working on a legislative solution. And if you go to healthyworkplacebill.org, it will take you to information about the bill. The first thing you need is a good definition. What is workplace bullying? And the definition that we showed earlier is something the bill incorporates for the most part. It takes the psychological definition and it adds some legal things, right? So if, if you're filing a lawsuit, you need to establish what harm has been done to you. Mm. So it, it's natural that one of, the, one of the proofs that you're going to have to provide if you're a plaintiff is that health harm has been done, and maybe some economic harm as well. Um, and then what's the intent of the person who's targeting you? Well, nothing in this law is suggesting that a person who is just socially awkward should be accused as a perpetrator, right? Or punished as a perpetrator. What we're looking at are people who deliberately go out, single out targets and abuse them. Um, and so the law is written in such a way that it defines um, who the targets are, what behavior has to happen, what the harms are, what the perpetrator has to have done and intended to do. And then it also provides um, defenses for, um, so when, when a person is accused, let, let's say you're the one who's being accused of workplace bullying, what can you use to defend yourself? And especially, so if you're a business, if you took steps to stop the bullying, there's a question about what your liability should be. If you're an individual, you should be able to present a, a defense that you didn't do it, right? And then the jury system figures it out. Um, so the law is just a simple, is just for a simple lawsuit. There's no CHRO, there are no protected classes, 
It doesn't matter what your race or religion or sexuality or political beliefs are. Whatever your status, you're protected under the Healthy Workplace Bill. Now, it sounds as though when you're talking about having to show harm, that that first visit to the doctor's office, even if you don't really know what's going on at mm -hmm. first, is very important because you always need a baseline. That's right. You need a baseline. And I think, you know, one thing about getting more people in the healthcare system and, and being able to have preventative health care is that maybe more of us will have that kind of baseline That's starting true. out. Um, Whether or not you're suffering if you have regular checkups and your blood pressure is suddenly going sky high right. or you're getting, you know, having symptoms of depression, that might just be routinely recorded. Right, right. And, um, and so, yeah, going to the doctor is an important step in that. And then documenting everything, right? I mean, one of, the, one of the things that you need to start doing if you think, if you even think something's happening, is recording what's going on. And, you know, if it turns out later on you think that's nothing, put it away. But Now, is it any kind of help at all if someone thinks there's a problem of kind of confronting the person who's doing it to start with in a, within, you know, a workplace environment, you know, asking for a meeting and having a third person there. And does that help at all or not? It depends. So it depends where you are in the process and who's going to be in the room. One problem I think exists is, so let's say it were a domestic violence instance. If you were beating me in a domestic violence right. situation, we would never go into mediation because right. as perpetrator and target, we're unequal. So if, what's, if you've already reached the stage where the abuse of conduct is severe, then it's too late for mediation. But early on, certainly it's worth trying to get a neutral mediator. It's, it's worth trying to pursue uh, getting an understanding, there is always a possibility that the behavior on the part of the perpetrator is unintentional. And you don't want to, I'm not saying that you should always assume it's intentional and that it's going to turn into the worst possible abuse, right? You can, you can try to understand what's going on and inform yourself uh, by reading about workplace bullying and kind of, you know, figuring out the signs. But once you get to a certain point, the motivation is really kind of irrelevant. It's what damage is, is being done that's right. relevant. Right. You need to protect yourself. And of course, that's a, it's hard to make that call. Um, now, you talked about the health work, uh, healthy workplace bill that's being proposed in states all over the place. Yep. Uh, Connecticut this year is seeming to be interested in this whole subject. And there's a bill that isn't quite this bill that's been proposed. Do you right. want to talk about the differences and, in your opinion, um, why it's important to go with the healthy workplace language rather than uh, and, and urge the supporters right. of, uh, of targets um, to implement a bill that, that works better? Yeah. So the War Healthy Workplace Bill has been introduced in 26 states and two territories. It was actually passed in Puerto Rico last year. Oh, yeah? Yeah, but the governor vetoed it. So Go you're going to find, you know, there's opposition. Um, but the law that's been proposed in Connecticut right now I think is very, um, it's very bare bones. And I think Senator Winfield, who is one of the co-chairs of the Labor and Public Employees Committee, has shown himself to be very concerned with workplace bullying. Um, he's a very progressive legislator, and he's tried to tackle this problem before with various kinds of bills. This one isn't necessarily in its final form. It's a um, proposed Senate Bill 432. So they're going to be talking about this in the coming weeks um, to get the language finalized. But one idea in this bill that I think is not good is the establishment of an advisory board. 
It's unclear what this advisory board would do exactly. Um, it says um, that they'll kind of research um, workplace bullying and um, I sort of think this adds a layer of bureaucracy that doesn't, um, that doesn't do targets any good and doesn't really help anybody. And that, it isn't clear what they're empowered to really change. To really do. Um, and in the bill, there are, there are no definitions right now of workplace bullying, what it is, no definitions of what the level of harm has to be or types of harm that might occur. There's no definition of intent. Um, there are no remedies. So uh, right now, the bill doesn't have anything you can actually get um, out of it if you are the target of workplace bullying. And with the advisory board uh, suggestion, it indicates that it would cost the taxpayer something to have this legislation pass. The Healthy Workplace Bill, on the other hand, has very clear definitions of every stage. Um, it also has no taxpayer consequences. The state doesn't fund anything. In fact, the state stays out of it. There are no boards like the CHRO that you have to go, th or no processes like the CHRO they have to go through. This is a simple lawsuit. Now, right now, a person doesn't, can't, can't uh, sue a workplace abuser? Not, not really. So there are, um, if it's not protected class-based harassment, right? Oh. So if you are being harassed because of your race, your gender, your sexuality, and these other protected categories, then you have the classic harassment lawsuit. But if your bully hasn't given any, I, given you any idea about why they're doing it, and in fact, it may be nothing about you. It may be about them, right? And, and they're just bullying you and exhibit a white guy and none of the sure. protected None classes. of the protected classes. It's not being done because of your race or because of your sex. You have no cause of action. Um, if you quit your job, it's very unclear whether even something like um, constructive dismissal can be used. And that's a, that's a concept that if you're forced to quit right. because conditions are so bad, it's really like being fired, right? Right. But it, it's hard to, that's not really used in workplace bullying instances very much. So even in terms of a person quitting and trying to collect unemployment. Probably can't do it. And workplace, now, this you know, law would help? This law, you, this law would help because it gives you the cause of action. It makes workplace bullying, it makes abusive conduct a tort, which is, you know, a tort is um, a harm, uh, an action for harm. And, and I would just bring up, we have, a work, we have a workplace violence statute in Connecticut. Hmm. Frankly, that probably doesn't protect you either, because <laughs> although it, it says that it covers psychological violence, truth be told, um, unless someone hauls off and punches you, it's probably not a statute that you're going to be able to use. You I'm can't guessing the proof of, da of harm would be pretty hard. Pretty, pretty hard, and you know, it's really the workplace violence is something that you know, police get involved in. You're not going to call a policeman when you're being verbally abused, right? Yeah, it's, or when people yeah. are signing their names to your paper, you know, right. or undermining your, your work in other ways. That isn't, well, you think of police being involved in criminal behavior, right. and this isn't the same. No, no. Um, so um, one thing I, I noticed that um, in fall, in October, is, is uh, the Connecticut Week Against Workplace Bullying. I don't know what it's Freedom, freedom from workplace bullying. Thank you. Yeah. And um, many cities, sometimes in the past, New London has, uh, have uh, created proclamations. Um, how many cities and uh, towns around Connecticut participate in that typically? Um, it's, it varies every year. So this year, we only had four. 
Um, we've had more towns participate in the past. Um, Central Connecticut State University yes. always participates. I'm very glad to say that President Jack Miller has um, always issued a proclamation since uh, I think 2011. And the proclamation basically says what workplace bullying is, why this is harmful to the workplace, um, what the, so it says, um, whereas that well-being depends upon the existence of healthy and productive employees working in safe and abuse-free work environments, and whereas research has documented the stress-related health consequences for individuals caused by exposure to abusive work environments, and whereas abusive work environments are costly for employers with consequences including reduced productivity, absenteeism, turnover, injuries, and whereas protection from abusive work environments should apply to every worker and not be limited to legally protected class status based only on race, color, gender, national origin, age, or disability. Um, and the entity signs this proclamation and declares it Freedom from Workplace Bullies Week. Well, we'd like this to be every week of the year. Um, and we think the Healthy Workplace Bill is going to be passed in a state like Massachusetts or New York very soon. Um, as you know, with other laws that people try to get passed, the fact that I've been working on this for a decade is no surprise. It, it, we are in the land of steady habits. Yeah, yeah, we're in the land of steady habits. And, you know, it's understandable that small businesses would say, do we really need another burden on employers? And many times what they aren't thinking about is the cost that bullies impose on their business. They're, they're not evaluating the cost in that way. What they're thinking about is, well, somebody could sue me, um, and that's worse. But long term, it's way worse to have bullies in the workplace. Now, what can employers do now if there is a workplace that you know, the employer really cares about it? Are, are there things employers can do to make their workplaces better places to work even while we're waiting for the law to pass? Sure. I mean, it, there are people who train, um, you know, conduct training sessions about workplace bullying. And in fact, California just passed a law that this training is mandatory. So uh, this is a great step. Um, it's not the total healthy workplace bill, but it's kind of what the healthy workplace bill is aiming for, that in the larger workplaces, you'd have training available for employees. And in smaller workplaces that people would be aware and have perhaps their own policies that um, would say, you know, we don't, well, I don't like the zero tolerance language, but <laughs> we don't right. want bullying here. We want people to be collegial and work together. And I think in small businesses, the, the owner of the business can set the tone. Um, work, workplace owners and managers have to be willing to take the hard step of firing bullies, not firing targets. It's easier to fire the target in some ways because the target seems like your immediate problem. They're the one being absent. They're the one stressed out. Um, they're the one whose work productivity may be falling off. But what happens is the bully, once that target leaves, the bully's gonna find another target. And then it's another employee. So it just perpetuates the, the whole cycle. Yeah. You remove the bully, you solve the problem. Now, what can people do right now who want to get involved in, and help? Well, Connecticut Healthy Workplace Advocates is just my name for my grassroots operation. <laughs> you can join us on Facebook. We have both a closed group and a page that you can like. So if you put in... Uh, Connecticut Healthy Workplace Advocates on Facebook, you'll get both things. And at the, by the way, at the end of the uh, community calendar, even though the second PowerPoint seems to kind of be dead on <laughs> arrival, um, we did put a slide with, with all the links on it. Oh, great. So, uh, so that will be up. So yes, yeah, so people can 
can like on Facebook and, and also ask to join the, the closed group. Right. And we also have Twitter to keep you updated on legislative developments. Um, my email is ConnecticutBullyBusters at gmail.com. If you want any of the things I presented here today, if you want more information, I'm happy to send it. And, um, and so that's how you can get in touch with us. You should also go, just put in Google, Connecticut General Assembly, pick the Labor and Public Employees uh, Committee to look at, and you should send a letter to your legislator. If you're, a lot of people don't feel too confident doing that. So one thing we have, I'm just gonna hold this up, I have a petition that I will send to people who want it, and they can, have, they can sign it. You don't have to get 20 signatures or 10,000 signatures. It could be you and your spouse and your friend and somebody else, and then the address is above it. You put it in an envelope and you mail it off. And um, we also have a petition online at change.org. Um, if you look for um, Gary Winfield, Pass the Healthy Workplace I'm Bill. I'm guessing you could do an internet search on Pretty something much. like that, Connecticut Healthy Workplace Bill uh, petition. And, and we're and everywhere. you'd find it. Yes. Because I found a lot of things <laughs> just, just looking a, a, around for them at all. Now, you brought some stuff, too, a I little did. bit. I I didn't bring a whole lot of paraphernalia, but I brought you a T-shirt. Oh. Um, Pass the Connecticut Healthy Workplace Bill. I don't know. It might might be a little roomy, but um, this, uh, this is the bill we're trying to get passed, and this is the website you can go to for more information, and then on the back, you'll be oh. advertising a little statistic here. 35% of adult Americans, or 54 million people, are bullied in the workplace. It's enough to fill six western states. And you can wow. see from this map how they're demarcated. That's a lot of people, because that one of those states is California. <laughs> and wow. It's this is a this is a really common problem. And um, people shouldn't imagine that it's just gonna happen to somebody else. Fully 50% of people in the workplace are gonna experience it either as a target or as a witness to it. If you're a witness to it, that can also have some negative effects. Well, since you mentioned witnesses, and we have a little bit of time, um, what should witnesses do? I'm guessing that very frequently, the natural inclination would be to just back away. <laughs> do nothing, because you don't want to be the next one. Um, it's interesting, because I actually um, recently had an acquaintance of mine tell me that she was witnessing bullying, and she stood up and told the bully to stop it, and the bully did back off. And I think sometimes that does work, right? Calling attention to it, especially if you're not the target, it, it lets the bully know somebody's watching this. And you don't have to say it in a nasty way. You can, you can say, you know, I thought you were awfully demeaning, and you probably didn't mean to be, but you should be aware of your workplace behavior. And you don't have to be rude or confrontational necessarily. Um, but I think coworkers have an obligation. If you, if you are too intimidated by the, by the bully to say something, then you, you need to go to somebody and, who's above the bully and let them know what's happening. Now you mentioned, we have five minutes left, uh, you mentioned that um, New York and Massachusetts seem very close. Um, when is their session and how close is very close? Yeah, Massachusetts right now is in the process of garnering sponsors for the bill. Um, and so it, their deadline is just a couple days from now. It was extended um, because of the snow. They had a lot of snow too. So in a couple of days, they will have to have garnered enough sponsors and it looks like they're going to make it. Um, and then they have to go through the process of having uh, readings of the bill and public testimony. New York, um, I'm not sure where they are right now, but they've had a bill long running that's been refined and 
um, their advocates are quite active. Well, even though we just have a couple minutes left, we do have a phone call. Okay. So I will take it. All right. Hi, thank you for calling. Yeah, oh. my name is Charles. Hi. Hi, I just wanted to say I support having a law about workplace bullying, but I got some questions about it. Sure. Um, what I'd like to know is, will this cost the taxpayers anything? If it's just really just another layer of bureaucracy. And I think, you know, that's something it's very important that we take out any cost to the taxpayers. Um, the healthy workplace bill is cost neutral. And it also is bureaucracy neutral. It doesn't create any new bureaucracy. And I think it, that's a concern for a lot of people. Thank you for asking Right, so that. it really gives individuals the right to take legal action and have results. Exactly. And it's not really more government no. in any of So I guess that is one reason to uh, support changes in the language of the current Connecticut proposed bill in favor of a healthy workplace bill because if you know we're concerned about cost to the the taxpayers then it makes a big difference yeah keep it simple keep it simple thank you very much well thank you for your answers thank yeah. you All right. so in our last one minute uh tell people again how they can get in touch with you uh if they want more information uh, if they want the PowerPoint we showed, as well as the one we didn't show. <laughs> okay. <laughs> Connecticut Bullybusters at gmail.com. And um, my name is Kathy or Catherine Hermes, H E R M E S, like the Greek god, no right. relation. So you can Google me. <laughs> I am a professor at CCSU, and although I'm not doing this in my capacity as a professor, it's very easy to find me online. And look for us on Facebook, look for us on Twitter. And, you know, go to your city, try to make your local legislators aware that this should happen. I think some municipalities probably have some anti-workplace violence laws. Sure. Uh, ordinances within uh, their city, yeah, body of law. Yeah, not in Connecticut that I know of. But in cities around the U.S., there are cities who have passed ordinances um, about workplace bullying, kind of mirroring some of this language. Well, thank you, Kathy. Uh, good luck with the bill. Thanks. I'm hoping that if Massachusetts and New York pass bills, Connecticut won't be too far behind. I'm thinking that, um, well, this is a short session this year, but um, you see, but, but, but the issue is being discussed. Yes, it's, it's on the table. And, you know, Connecticut has kind of led the way in a lot of workplace legislation. So I'm very hopeful and I'm very glad that Senator Winfield and Representative Tershak are co-chairs of the Labor Committee. And I think we're going to see some progress. And before we go out on our community calendar, um, I just wanted to draw attention to the fact that, um, you know, we always put music behind the slides of upcoming events. And today the song was something that Kathy provided. And maybe you can s tell us a little about the song. It's, it's Wanda's song and it's about bullying. And it was a song that was sent to the Workplace Bullying Institute. And um, it tells a very moving story and it'll sound like school bullying mostly, but you'll, you'll recognize bullying is bullying. Yeah, and um, also the last slide after the events uh, does contain links to places that you can go for more information. So uh, thanks a lot for having me on the well, show. Well, thanks for coming down to New London. <laughs> so long drive with the roads really kind of still not too good. Yeah, well, my pleasure. Well, thank you, and uh, we'll see you all next week. We'll air this, and we'll have it on YouTube probably within a few days. And um, we'll go to the calendar. Thanks a lot. Thank you. Wanda was the one girl we claimed we never knew. Lincoln High School's homely coming queen. 
She barely graduated with the class of 92 Voted most unlikely to succeed Rumor who her daddy was At least that's what her town I guess we always thought that we were building ourselves up Sticks and stones we threw to break her down All the years we thought it didn't matter Cause we never saw her cry And Wanda never asked us Why do you hurt me and treat me like you do? What have I ever done to deserve this? you do the things you do if you were me and <laughs> looking back I see the pain that we put wander through just Sticks and stones we do Cause it was deep inside Wanda was bleeding The paper said her death was self-inflicted Was it suicide? Cause the note she died Do you hurt me? this from you would you do the things you do if you were me and I were you for every action there's reaction broken hearts don't just happen Yourself in their position, there's no good answer to the question. Why do you hurt me? Treat me like you do. What have I ever done to deserve this from you? Would you do the things you do? You were me and I were you. Words hurt. Don't be a part of it.